Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Well, we're catching a few sprinkles here today and getting some mixed sunshine. All the systems are charging up pretty good. Having a pretty lazy day. We're going to talk about some other ways you can charge your system when all else fails. And it's going to involve that generator and those charge controllers right there, or those actual chargers, not charge controllers. Those are three different chargers, and we've got a fourth one we'll show you as well. So a couple of weeks ago, I got a comment from Cameron Alexander, and he was wondering, in the event of a failure, either a grid failure or your uh, solar system failed in some kind of way, like your solar panels went offline, suffered some damage, or a prolonged weather event, how would you charge your lithium iron phosphate batteries? And as many of you know, I have uh, several different systems that I deploy out here to make sure we always stay uh, up and running with power for everything that we need. But we do keep these things always as, you know, what I like to call the dreaded apparatus for the last uh, ditch effort to stay up and running. Don't have to use these very often, but we do have a 2000 uh, watt Honda uh, inverter series generator, a 10 amp lithium iron phosphate charger, a 20 amp one, and the 30 amp one, and another 30 amp one in the back that I'll show you that's uh, hardwired into the solar system. So these are what you would need for any of those eventualities, whether you solar panels took some serious damage and you were not able to generate any solar power, the grid was offline and you're reliant upon the grid uh, for your charging. So simple, bat, uh, simple generator and make sure you have lithium iron phosphate chargers. Now this first 10 amp one was sent to me when I first purchased those Chins batteries. Uh, working on about three years ago, two and a half years ago or so. Uh, this is a battery charger from Power Queen, this 20 amp charger. And then this is one uh, that we reviewed quite a while back and it's a 30 amp lithium iron phosphate charger. They all work very well. Of course, the 10 amp takes much longer to charge up your battery. The 20 amp is faster and the 30 amp is the fastest. And the nice thing about any of these chargers <clears throat> is they're just very easy. So you start up your generator, of course, plug in your charger. They all have alligator clips, positive and negative. You tie that onto your battery. And the nice thing is they all put out 14.6 volts for charging the lithium, just as it should be. And these will all turn off when, they're, when your battery is full. So really, really easy. And... You don't have to sit there and watch it. I mean, they will, and I've tested all of these. When your battery gets up to about 14.2 is where all of these uh, just turn off. Your battery's uh, fully charged and you're ready to go again. So you do have your depleted battery uh, wherever it is. And you would hook up your alligator clips nice and firm to their positive and negative leads. And then you just plug in to your generator. And what I would do is I would start up the generator first and then plug it in and you will see the light come on down here. All of these have a charging light that would show you when it's charging and uh, depending on the different colors that they use on the chargers, a different color for when it's full. Typically it's just red when it's charging and green when it's done charging. And you would hear your generator wind down as well when it's not pumping out that 14.6 volts. And then you would be good to go. So uh, Cameron was wondering if there was any special tools needed. For this type of charging, no special tools needed. I mean, you would obviously need your generator, <clears throat> some gasoline stored up as well. And that's about it. I've used all of these chargers. They all work well. 
And like I said, 30 amps will get you fully charged faster than 20 or 10. You know, that 10 amp, they're cheaper, of course, if that's a consideration, they're much cheaper. And they, of course, go up in price with the higher amperage. So that's it for just simply charging your battery. Now, I haven't had to use any of these devices in a very, very long time. And that's because I do have uh, a lot of extra solar panels running to make sure that I don't have them. But uh, the time will come where I will still need one of these chargers and the generator. Uh, come winter time, it's possible for us to not see the sun in any uh, capacity for a month. And that's not even exaggerating. So it's been, you know, over a year since I've really uh, needed to use any of these. But I always feel better knowing that I do have them. And I sometimes forget that a lot of you guys are are running these things and you're tied up to the grid and you're using this as a little backup system, little auxiliary system, whatever your purposes may be. But this is one simple, simple way to make sure you can keep your uh, batteries exactly where you want them on the full side. <laughs> And the other thing I'll say about these chargers is that when you do plug any of these type of chargers in, they just go uh, full tilt and, and push in that 14.6 volts and try and get your battery up as fast as it possibly can, which is great. And, you know, there's no regulating features on them to, like, take your uh, voltage down uh, or, you know, you can't really set any parameters. These are just kind of plug and play or plug in and charge up uh nothing to change on these they're just you know everything is built in when they get up to a full charge they just turn off they're very convenient and, and they do work very very well i've used like i said i've used all of them now i'll show you the other one here in the back so back in the utility room here uh, this is the first system i built and this is with those uh, chins batteries which now have oh about two and a half years of uh, run time on them they work absolutely perfectly and what i did for this system was i tied in this particular this is a, a 30 amp charger from victron a 12 volt 30 amp smart charger and the difference between this one and those other three that i showed you well the first thing i would say is price these are more expensive but they do have features that you can set some parameters on. Uh, you can let it pump in the 30 amp, uh, you know, charging capacity. You can uh, switch it down to 15 amps if you want to charge uh, lower and slower. And on the app that you would download, you can monitor the progress. It'll show you what the, the state of charge is in your batteries and how this is... Uh, charging your batteries up there's graphs and and like i said it, this one is a little more uh sophisticated than those other three those other three work just as well but this is the one i like for actually tying it into the system now this one would require you know a little bit uh different hardware compared to the others because i do have this uh going to uh the bus bars positive and negative bus bars. So when I fire up that generator, all I have to do is plug that in right here uh, to right there. And this is the, the back of the cord for uh, this Victron charger. And then I can just come back here and look on my app on my phone or tablet and monitor exactly what this is doing, the state of charge in my batteries. And I really wanted to have one that was built in that I didn't have to just bring a portable charger in. This can be used as, in the same manner as a portable, but I went ahead and tied this into the system. So when I start up the generator, I just plug it in. And I know that I'm charging up my 600 amp hour bank right here. Uh, and since I put this in, uh, I've, of course, beefed up my solar array to this particular system and again i have not had to hardly use this but it's there for when i do and 
you know, I'm going to have to at some point. There's just almost no doubt about that, especially with the kind of weather we get out here lately and for the past year have not had to, to use these chargers. But that's what we do. We don't have any grid opportunity out here, so we are completely 100% uh, reliant upon the devices that we deploy out here to stay up and running. And 99.9% .9 of the time we do just fine with solar panels. And let's say in the event that you do have a, a little system tied up or whatever size your system is, here we just have a, a small system tied up. And of course this battery is already 100% full. But if we imagine that you did suffer some kind of an event, uh, you're not charging, whatever, you suffered some damage, uh, who knows what it might be. The other thing you could do is you do not have to, like I showed you out there on the deck, uh, you don't have to take your battery off and drag it out there to where your generator is. You can bring that charger in here and you can just hook it up right there, still tied into your uh, monitoring system. Your charge controller, if it's something like a, a Victron, it will show you uh, the status of the charge and you can just put those alligator clips right on here and charge that battery up without disconnecting it from your system. So whether you just had this battery stored on a shelf in a garage and it was time to, to beef it up using one of those chargers, or if you just needed to keep things running, like this one here, you know, we've got some loads that are constantly running, running off of this, and you didn't want to disconnect anything, just go ahead and you can tie it up and charge it up in place. And the charger will still monitor it and let you know when it's fully charged and stop charging. And you'll be able to verify that with, with your charge controller. It will show you that uh, your battery is now back up to full. So these are some ways that uh, I sometimes forget that a lot of us are having to do out there. Uh, those chargers really don't come into play too much here, but these are various ways that we use them. And also, uh, hopefully it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, that if you are having to deploy a generator to charge up your system, and like that one I just showed you that was in the, in, uh, in the shop, uh, make sure your generator <clears throat> is outside. Run an extension cord from the generator into your charger and then to your battery. Don't ever fire anything up like this inside the house. Uh, I think that's just worth mentioning because I still do hear of people uh, firing up a generator inside that house and that can uh, not be good for you. I mean, it can kill you if you left a, a generator running inside your uh, shop, house, whatever it may be. These need to be outside while they're running. Run your extension cord into your charger. The charger, of course, can... You want it inside uh, and close to your battery because they just don't have a real, real long cable. So, but this stays outside always, always, always. Do not ever run that in the house. So, yeah. So, thanks for the uh, question on on that. It, it gave me just a good idea of just how to simply show what yet another backup system is for us out here. We always have it. We are confident that no matter what happens, we don't miss a beat with any of the uh, appliances or whatever we need to run. They are always up and running. And, you know, most people that solely live off grid, and I mean 100% off grid, where you don't have anything other than what you have to make sure you stay in power, most people will have a backup generator of one kind or another. So that's a good way to, to think about it. Or if you are living on the grid uh, and it goes down, which it does, you're still up and running. Yeah. Aloha, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.